Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karine Alude, where we talk about everything and I'm Karine Alude. If you're not yet part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to like, subscribe, and join the Friendship Circle. If you're already part of the Friendship Circle, please be sure to turn on your notification bell so you can always know when I post a new upload. Now let's get into this video. Today we're talking about Jasmine Guy, best known from being in a different world. She is known as the very bougie, elegant, almost snobbish, <laughs> Whitley um, Gilbert from a different world and, if, and this show came out in 1987 so I know a lot of my newbies don't know nothing about the different world but if you don't you need to find out because the fashion is definitely coming back I see it doing a comeback they were fashion icons to me the looks and it was definitely a very positive representation of black teens and uh, college, you know, and just the different issues that they dealt with. There was love, there was laughter, there was, it wasn't all bad, and it was, you know, it was just balanced, just a normal everyday life, and it was a cool representation to see. And Whitley Gilbert was definitely one of the it girls of the late 80s and early 90s, mid 90s. She was definitely one of the it girls, okay? So I'm very excited to break her down. I know you guys have requested her a lot. She has been through quite some time so there will be a, a little bit of controversial talk, uh, conversation around her video uh, so remain respectful in the comments and don't be divisive you know remain united let's not make this a debate of light skin dark skin or anything like that it's just her story it's her truth and uh, we're gonna get into some things with that but before we do if you guys love the soundtrack you're listening to it's my big brother he puts all these pieces together uh, he started off just for my channel and he just has a gift for it so I always encourage you guys to support him I always put the link in the description for his channel go click on it give him a listen a like tell him Kareen sent you and subscribe for more of this type of beats and music from him so without further ado, let's get into this. So Jasmine Guy is known for her conservative Southern belle charm in a different world. Uh, as Whitley Gilbert, she has worked as a singer, dancer, and thespian. And you guys, she has album out, okay? So she actually sang, sang. Born in Boston, Massachusetts to an African-American father and Portuguese American mother, Guy was raised in an affluent historic Collier Heights neighborhood of Atlanta, Georgia, where she attended Northside Performing Arts High School. Her mother, the former Jay Rudolph, was a former high school teacher and her father, the Reverend William Vincent Guy, was pastor of the historic Friendship Baptist Church of Atlanta, which served as an early home to Spelman College. He was also a college instructor in philosophy and religion and at the age of 17 she moved to New York City to study dance at the Alvin Ailey American Dance Center so the gifts of beauty and talent however were not enough to assure Guy a happy childhood unfortunately Guy told people that she was often the target of criticism from darker skinned classmates in the Atlanta public schools she, this is a direct quote from her. She said, I remember getting into several fights in grade school because black kids would think I thought I was pretty because I had light skin and long hair. Uh, they said I always tried to talk properly, but I wasn't trying to seem better. I just wanted to be me. This is similar with Diane Carroll. Only Diane Carroll was more brown skinned, but because she spoke a certain way and carried herself a certain way, because she's the ultimate diva, elegant, bougie queen. I love me some Diane Carroll. I already did a breakdown for her and she's browner skinned a little on the darker spectrum, but people definitely always thought, oh, you're trying to speak away. So you're, tr you, you're trying to be white. You're trying to, you know, it, it's a thing that was going on even since back then. And Jasmine definitely had to deal with that. And she always said she couldn't help how she sounded. She couldn't help how she looked. It was just how she was born. And that's just how her voice was. So even now, Guy often finds herself addressing the issue of her skin color she said I'm tired of hearing about the plight of the mulatto she told Essence it's old news sure it's caused me pain just the other day a dark-skinned friend of mine was saying how she'd always envied me well I told her I always been envious of the shade of her skin it's important that chocolate women of the world know they're beautiful she added 
I spent years worrying about these things, crying in my diary, but I finally stopped myself, stopped finding fault with my big eyes or my blemishes. Like so many other people, I had to fight feeling ugly. We're all different, yet we're all the same. Why as women are we always feeling bad about ourselves? And to add to that, because that's the end quote, and I know some of you guys, because there was some people, you know, in certain comment sections when I was watching unsung documentaries on Jasmine, that was like, oh, she's just complaining. She didn't want to be dark. She didn't da-da-da. Like, it's true, guys. I, when I was younger, I was very, very light, me and my sister. And it was, it, it wasn't, I know dark-skinned girls go through way more, and I'm in no sense putting myself in a position to show I struggled more. But it was not a pleasant experience. They used to cut our hair. Like, even now, there's hair issues I'm struggling with from, you know, weird old kids that has to do this they're just kids they don't understand but I, I always was so confused why so young kids would be so malicious uh, about things like that but we definitely started playing soccer and running track and stuff being in the sun a lot more to darken our skin I'm not even kidding you I used to sunbathe literally sit there to be way darker than I am you know and it, it worked for me. By the time I was in middle school, I wasn't considered light. I was more brown. So there was attention taken off from that. And I lived for it. I lived for it all through high school. And then unfortunately in college, you're not outside anymore. You're inside a little bit more. You're working. So your color starts to come back. And, you know, by the time I was older, I was confident enough to not care. Or those stuff didn't get to me. I don't really, you know. But there's some women that are afraid to talk about these experiences because it sounds like, oh please woe is me you just want attention you just want this you just like they downplay what they go through as well and I feel like like she said all women deal with their insecurities and go through this after a certain age we have to stop this mentality and stop thinking like this and just see the beauty in each other only we as women black women can do that for each other only we once we start accepting each and every single shade each and every single texture, each and every single dialect, like we will change the game. And the divisiveness really, really has to stop at some point because every family has a light skinned member or a dark skinned member. Like, how do you treat them? You know, mm, I don't know. The guy began her television career with a nun speaking role as a dancer in seven episodes of the 1982 television series Fame under the direction of choreographer Debbie Allen. At the tender age of 17, Guy left Atlanta to make her own way in the world on a $75 a week budget. She performed with Ailey's second and third companies and auditioned frequently for Broadway and off-Broadway dancing roles. New York was a food awakening, she told Essence. It was lonely and scary, but I just couldn't afford those big city fears. I was pursuing my dream of becoming a dancer, so I put my paranoia in my pocket, fought that smelly old subway, and just kept training. Frustrated with her poverty wage and with the fact that she was refused black actress roles because she was too light-skinned, Guy went to Los Angeles to work as a dancer on a television show, Fame. That too proved disappointing. She said, they treated us like scenery, she said of the Fame producers, and I knew in my heart I could do better. Besides, I missed the discipline of dance training, so I quit. I tucked my tail between my legs and returned to Ailey. I went from making $750 a week to making $75 a week. Eventually, Guy landed small parts in musicals and variety shows such as The Wiz, Bubbling Brown Sugar, and Leader of the Pack. Her touring schedule took her all over Europe and the United States, sometimes leaving her near exhaustion. Guy's first movie role was in Spike Lee's 1988 film School Days about life in an all-black college. Comment below if you guys want me to do a breakdown of School Days and add it to the list. I know The Devil Wears Prada is next. It's been requested so many times. <laughs> but ironically, Guy was cast as a light-skinned black woman who was shunned by her dark-skinned classmates. She said, the role was difficult for me because it brought back ugly memories, she told people. Again, I had to face the reality of how the world sometimes views people only on outward appearance. I don't like being prejudged. Painful as the role was for her, Guy drew notice for her portrayal of a wannabe, the vain spoiled beauty queen. 
Even after the film was shot, Guy still had trouble getting cast in any sort of substantial roles. She said, when you're light skinned, you get it coming and going. She said, how black do I have to be to play a black woman? Guy today remains best known for her starring role as Whitley Gilbert in the television sitcom A Different World, which was a spinoff of The Cosby Show and created by Bill Cosby himself. The show aired from 1987 to 1993 on NBC. So she read for a part on a new television comedy, which was a different world and was turned down at first. Discouraged, she took a position in a 1960s style review in Paris for six months. And she said, that nearly did me in. She further revealed to Essence, I was so burnt out I couldn't stop crying. To her surprise, she was called back to the set of a different world. This time she read for a new character. And she said, when I got to California to read for the show the second time, there was a room full of people, including the head of the network. She remembered, I swallowed hard, gave it all I had, and 15 minutes later was told to start working. I couldn't imagine no one else playing Whitley though. Guy admitted that she fought hard to win the role of Whitley. She told Essence, at first I worried that all she had were drop dead lines, funny lines for sure, but I knew there was more to her than humor. Gradually, the writers have let her develop and I've been able to give her more colors. I've tried to shade her personality. I worried whether black women would accept her or despise her and I've been gratified to learn that sisters seem to like her. Maybe that's because she's so funny or maybe it's because her preoccupation with femininity is universal. Deep down, Whitley's not a bad person. She's egotistical but good-hearted, end quote. And it shows that she had, um, Jasmine had a, 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 a desire desire to be liked by black women even in the characters that she played so she formulated the Whitley character to kind of be like this universal figure that was finally accepted because all her life she's been trying to just be accepted by her sisters uh, that kind of is so sad so Guy wrote three episodes of the show and directed one. In addition to appearing in every episode, she started as a co-star but ended up replacing the show's original star, Lisa Bonet. I did a breakdown for Lisa Bonet as well. Please check that out. I was nominated for and won six consecutive NAACP Image Awards for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. In addition to her defining role on A Different World, she appeared in a 1991 episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as Kayla, one of Will Smith's girlfriends. And in 1992, Guy appeared in CBS Stumping at the Savoy alongside Vanessa Williams, again under the direction of Debbie Allen. And in 1993, she played the mother of Halle Berry's character in the CBS TV miniseries Queen. This was based on Alex Haley's book, Queen. In 1996, she appeared on Living Single, playing a psychologist treating main character Khadijah for anxiety. She also played the recurring role of Kathleen, a fallen angel in the CBS network drama, Touched by an Angel from 1995 to 1997. In 2002, Guy lent her voice to the PBS math-based animated series, Cyber Chase, playing Ava, the queen of the cyber site, Symmetria, and made a cameo appearance on the Moesha spinoff, The Parkers. During the run of A Different World, Guy released her self-titled debut album in 1990. The album picked at number 143 on the U.S. Top 200 album chart and spawned three hit singles, Try Me, U.S. R&B number 14, and Another Like a Lover, which reached number 66 on the charts, and Just Want to Hold You, which reached number 34 on the U.S. R&B charts, with the last single cracking the main U.S. Top 40 singles chart. A Different World star Jasmine Guy and the late Tupac Shakur were much closer than the world ever knew. Not sure if there was ever an entanglement between them, but their friendship sure was put to the test after Pac was shot at Quad Studios in New York in 1994. In a prior interview featured on The Art of Dialogue, Jasmine Guy dropped several bombshells about her bond with Pac and his family. She originally met Pac when he had a guest appearance on A Different World from there they started hanging out. And I did a breakdown for Tupac as well, be sure to check that out. Jasmine first met Afini Shakur, which is Tupac's mother, and her sister in the hospital after to Tupac's 1994 shooting. She says Afini embraced her and they became friends afterwards. And speaking on Tupac's death, she had this to say. There was fear, there was a lot of mistrust. Anybody who was involved in his recuperation had to go underground because nobody on the outside could know anything. He was sure the people that shot him knew him, that it wasn't a random mugging. And on top of that, he gets a visit from his biological father who hadn't seen, he, seen him since he was maybe three or four. 
For me, sitting on the sidelines while all of that was going on, my heart would always stop for a while and just come back because um, there were very emotional times and I wasn't a member of the family, but I was always around for whatever Afini embraced me for. I really wanted to support them and not just Tupac, but that family who depended on him completely, end quote. Soon after Tupac was shot, Jasmine says, Pac did not want to stay in the hospital. Out of concern for his own safety, that's when she opened up her heart and her home to him. She said, we realized that Tupac didn't want to stay in the hospital or at his girlfriend's house. So they, Tupac's mom and aunt, called me to see if I could keep him while he was healing his wounds. He had five bullet wounds that he was healing from and he didn't feel safe sitting up in the hospital bed. End quote. So that was their little relationship, which was very nice that she was with him in the last days. Aside from that, she did get married before, okay? So Guy's career was the talk of the town, having starred in several successful comedy shows like The Cosby Show, which quickly shot her into the limelight. Her decision to wed Duckett came as a shock to most fans who found him relatively unknown. They didn't really know who he was. But Guy married Terrence Duckett in August 1999. There were no details of their wedding day, and fans could not see the screen diva walk down the aisle, but news emerged at both stars had started a family and welcomed a child. The couple had one child, a daughter named Imani, born in 1999, and on April 8, 2008, people reported that Guy and Duckett were divorcing after 10 years of marriage due to irreconcilable differences. Guy and her daughter subsequently took up residence in Guy's childhood hometown of Atlanta. Both parties decided to keep things low key and didn't offer an exact explanation over why they were splitting. However, a statement really st stressed that there was no villains in the divorce. The divorce came with untold financial burdens for the former couple and Guy had to file for bankruptcy after announcing a debt worth of $123,000 plus interest with Duckett's part of the debt reported to be worth not over $94,000 plus interest. The financial burdens became worse on the actress after her ex-husband neglected his role and stopped paying child support. Guy revealed that Duckett owed over $40,000 in unpaid child support. The actress claimed that a judge ordered her former flame to pay uh, $14.69 a month in child support for their daughter, but he had not dropped a dime, leaving her to bear the cost herself. Being a true fighter, Guy bore the burden of raising her daughter and ensuring her career thrived. And she has been, you know, doing roles. She's still acting. She's still out here getting roles and doing what she does and really want her to win towards the end and you can tell she has had a little transformation since the divorce where people are like oh my god the toll that it took on her and the stress divorce is brutal and cruel yeah you know but I wish her nothing but love and light and a lot of women young women looked up to Whitley she had character she had morals she had class she was definitely an icon and a role model definitely in, in a different world and continued to be in her regular world she has not been in any salacious type of scandals where you hear about her name she reminds me of Lynn Whitfield Diane Carroll all those women that were just wonderful role models and icons of their time and even till now so I wish her nothing but love and light please comment some positivity in the comments and wish her nothing but love and light I love you guys comment below who else would you guys like to see until next time